Good morning, my name is John Baxter. I'm the current president of the National Herbalist Association and have been so for the last six and a half years. My remit within the association has basically been a political uh, minder for the association. And as such, a lot of people miss the fact that I'm also a herbalist. And I hope, and I believe, quite a good one. What I'd like to talk about today is the beauty of the holistic practice of herbal medicine. And by holism, I mean the considerations that need to be taken into account when a client comes to visit. And the first principle there is individuality. Each and every person that visits a herbalist is an individual. They have individual needs, they have individual um, lifestyle, everything about them is unique and that uniqueness has to be taken into account. Uh, as an individual, they will have a personality that needs to be considered. The way they interact with the world, the way they interact with their relatives, with their friends, is all very, very important. And that leads us into the second aspect of holistic consultation. It is considering the social aspects of a person. How does their social life affect their health? Uh, if a person is over social, and if there is such a thing as being over social, we need to really consider how their adrenals are functioning in their world. Are they overdriving them or are they exhausted? We need to consider that. That hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis is one of the key components of individualising treatment. The environment in which they live is also very, live and work I should say, is very, very important as well. What is there in their environment that affects their health? It, it may be that they spend all day sitting in front of a computer screen and they are subject to the radiation that that gives them. We need to consider that when we're prescribing. And we need to consider the, the chemicals in their environment. Do they work in a factory that uses toxic products? Are they in an office that has sick building syndrome? All these things need to be considered, including how they travel to and from work. Do they sit in traffic for three and a half hours, breathing in lots of carbon monoxide? That will have an effect on their health. The environment is that thing. And of course, there's the physical aspect of treatment that needs to be taken into account as well. We need to understand what their symptoms are and how they relate to that person. Everything with a person is individualised and contextualised to that person. Their physical symptoms, although they may, in a medical sense, determine a disease pattern, and may lead to a diagnosis of disease is still individualised in that person. We need to consider that when we're thinking that. We don't have a case of, uh, pick a disease, don't have a case of the flu. What we have is a person suffering symptoms of the flu in the context of their life. And that is always very, very important to remember. Um, the spiritual aspect, and this is probably one of the hardest parts of dealing with an, an individual. Uh, often in Aboriginal culture, they consider that a person has not been fully cured from any disease until the spiritual aspects of their disease has been dealt with. And there's many stories that have been told by uh, Aboriginal elders which point to this. So a person is a spirit being anyway and not to consider their spirit life is a mistake that lots of practitioners make. It's often a hard thing to broach with a client, particularly if they're unaware of those sorts of aspects of their life, but it's well worth talking to them about it. It may be around their beliefs, because a belief can actually cause disease and beliefs 
are very powerful in their own nature. So spiritually, we have to consider that as well. And I've mentioned the physical, I've mentioned the spiritual, I've mentioned um, environment and social. Family is also a very, very important consideration in the development of a treatment program for an individual. Their interaction with a family member may actually cause them to have uh, symptoms of their disorder. Uh, simply because the family member creates angst or anger or emotions that they don't actually want to have in relation to their family members. And the, the internal conflict with that can set up the, the situation for disease to, to come along. Another aspect to consider is what I call um, secondary gain. And secondary gain is what goodies does a person get from being ill? You know, uh, children often uh, manifest asthma if they feel they, uh, could be a couple of reasons, it could be they feel smothered and can't breathe, or it could be that they've discovered that when they have an asthma attack they get lots of attention from mum and dad. And so the asthma manifests in a way that, that creates that attention that they crave from their parents. So I um, would like to say that individualising and taking this holistic approach to a consultation will actually give you a broader picture of the person, will give you more options in treatment and actually help you get to that underlying cause that is the actual cause of the disease, not just treating a symptom such as a cold or flu. Why is this person here with that disorder? I've been a member of the National Herbalist Association since 1991. Uh, I'm passionate about the association and the work it does. I think that's obvious in the fact that I've spent 13 years as a board member, half of which I've been president. I have a belief that the association can lead this profession into the future and guarantee it a place where it belongs in healthcare of Australians. We have a service that we can provide and offer and the association actually represents our profession to the outside world and I'm, I cannot recommend membership of the NHAA highly enough to any professional herbalist or naturopath that practices herbal medicine. We are there to support you, we do many many things for you as a member and that is the focus of the association. We are not there for any other purpose. And so, if you're a herbalist or a naturopath, join the NHAA and be truly supported in your profession.